It's better late than never. Muchas disculpas. It's on Catsat. And welcome back. I'm trying to find the balance between random popular news and presenting Vedic answers to the deeper questions of life. It's easy to shoot something down to critique world events, but who can offer viable solutions that can satisfy the deeper human need? Sometimes, doctors sugarcoat medicine in order to help their patient take their medication. When I was a kid, it was literally a polio vaccine in a sugar cube. While living in the US, there was a headache pill that was sugar-coated, and headache pills aren't that hard to swallow. But if you think that's unnecessary, how about this? In the US, they even have fruit-flavored postage stamps. The glues are of different flavors. They have apple flavor and strawberry flavor. Incredible. But these are the lengths that companies have to go to in order to get us sensually absorbed people to buy their products. They do what they have to do and sugarcoat their products to give themselves an edge in the marketplace. So I've noticed, when I post a video with a celebrity in it, I'll get more views, and when I upload one of my straight shooting to the point Vedic videos some of them fail to reach double digits. People want to be entertained. People want gossip, confrontation, controversy, and scandal. And boy this week the news has been saturated with it. My spiritual teacher would often comment that when he would speak on high philosophy, everyone would fall asleep. And, even those that did stay awake and listened, they too would soon forget. Yet, he added, as soon as we hear some gossip, then our ears prick up and we absorb the gossip and then go and tell 5 or 10 people. This is our predicament. And this is why the tabloids run with scandals, affairs and gossip, because this is a level of the audience. In actuality, these things are merely a distraction from the more important things that we should be focusing on in our lives. We all like a little scandal and controversy. This week, it's been Harvey Weinstein and his Hollywood list enablers, these two-faced hypocrites who have been virtue signaling at the pulpits of their awards ceremonies. They have been burying these scandals for decades. It's been alleged that in Hollywood, if you want to get ahead, if you'll excuse the pun, it's not a case of who you know, it's a case of who you blow. Wow. The casting couches it appears need to be upholstered with fabrics from which stains can be easily expunged. It's ironic that it was femtard extraordinaire Ashley Judd who set the cat amongst the pigeons. It seems the Democrats are cannibalizing themselves. Also this week, we've seen the crumbling NFL protests, whose take an E fiasco has had to kowtow to the power of the bottom line, the mighty dollar, and the will of the patriotic viewing public, who would sooner have their flag and anthem honored rather than disrespected. They would sooner have their freeways free than have them blocked by Antifa and BLM activists clad in black, stopping ordinary hard-working folk from getting to work and feeding their families. The NFL's fall in ratings, coupled with Trump's hard-hitting patriotic rhetoric, made the NFL owners realize that if they wanted mustard on their hot dogs next week, they'd better step back in line. So everyone likes a rumble in the jungle, a little confrontation, and the continued escalation of race tensions seems to be the weapon of choice for the fake news media. For the most part, fans love their sports stars for their talent that they have crafted over many years of dedication. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. That Hold up. Hey. 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 John McEnroe hey. kept his outbursts within the confines of the game. Take Britain's Andy Murray. He's been quite tempered in his critique of the Lawn Tennis Association. He's been quite vocal recently on sexism in tennis, but I can't imagine that cuckery to the femtard rhetoric is going to do him any favors. Not that I'm a tennis boff mind you, I'm just a simple cat who watches a little Tom and Jerry. Also this week, some archaeologist dug up M&M and, &M and he obliged by bilging out some anti-Trump dribble in front of a backdrop of a bunch of chronically stereotypical homies trying hard to look badass. Now if you're gonna dig someone up, dig up, easy, for reals. In fact, 
His rap was so dire, it made me think that I could slap some of that crap together and do a better job. And, to be honest, you'd think a rapper of his status could sport a hoodie with more swag than he could must tear in this woeful presentation. And last but by not means least, let's not forget, right on cue, the alleged mass shooting in Vegas, which is seemingly becoming more and more as if it is coming right out of the twilight zone. Even, according to YouTuber, Daboot, we have the reoperating of George Soros putting in a short on MGM stocks right before the shooting. What's going to be next? Someone needs to build an algorithm to determine the next thing that's going to hit the headlines. My guess is another truck mowing down tourists or an axe-wielding maniac shouting a liver akbar. It really wouldn't surprise me if there's not a think tank somewhere brainstorming a bread and circus formula for keeping the masses distracted. It's almost like the events that are fed to us through the various media outlets are like cattle prods that keep the sheeple trundling along in the desired direction, coaxed with the chemical formulas that are released through specifically orchestrated events that stimulate outrage, sentiment, shock application, and titillation. It's high-level gaslighting and we are the willful participants, semi-comatose and not aware enough to avoid our own demise. Such is life in the material tabernacle, even in the spiritual quarter of the so-called enlightened. Most so-called teachers that claim to awaken us from our slumber are for the most part entrepreneurs who, although may have started out with the best intentions, soon succumb to the temptations of wealth, name, and fame. Great saints have stated that one may be able to rise above the desire for wealth and material acquisition, but the desire for name and fame runs through our veins. If this is the confession of the humble saint, then what to speak of, your honor the mill, pseudo-spiritualist. So it's not so easy to renounce these things. So, these peddlers of knowledge may offer snippets of wisdom that are very often accompanied with hefty retreat fees, but last no longer than your average ayahuasca session, only to again become submerged by the waves of the material tabernacle. And why is that? Why are we unable to maintain a deeper awareness of the higher reality? The answer is simple. Our desire for the spiritual is not strong enough. We cannot have our feet in two worlds. Sometimes, when someone is very determined, through any particular practice, their intense desire can temporarily open the door to spiritual realization. And, after some time, that door closes again. To return to that state or level of awareness requires incredible determination and discipline. Wisdom is not free. Power is not free. Even love is not free. Friendship is not free. Everything involves a sacrifice of some kind. The highest level of sacrifice gives the highest reward. Where one invests their energy and what we sacrifice for will be based on the qualifications of the individual. Someone will blow a fair chunk of their wages on lottery tickets. Some may flutter theirs away at the bookies. Others will canvass for or sponsor their local political representatives and so on and so forth. So everything is based on qualification and if we want to better our position both materially and spiritually it will help us to know our own lack of qualification. In order to work on improving our position rather than strut around with our heads high in the clouds considering ourselves the bee's knees. So. The ancient wisdom of the Vedas highlights, for our own reflection, the four defects of the human condition. They are 1. The tendency to commit mistakes. 2. The tendency to be subject to illusion. 3. The propensity to cheat others. And 4. Imperfect senses. Hopefully, these are self-explanatory. So, in our illusion, the Vedas is saying that we are claiming false ownership over the assets of this world, and we are competing for material acquisition. Universal teacher, Swami Prabhupada, eloquently explained, and I'm paraphrasing, that, in modern society, there is always a great quarrel between laborers and capitalists. 
This quarrel has taken an international shape, and the world is in danger. Men face one another in enmity, and snarl, just like cats and dogs. The scripture titled, Shri, Isho Upanishad, cannot give advice to cats and dogs, but, it can deliver Vedic wisdom, to man, through bona fide holy teachers. The human race should take the Vedic wisdom, of the Shri Isho Upanishad and not quarrel, over material possessions. One must be satisfied with whatever privileges are given to him by providence. There can be no peace, if the communists, or capitalists, or any other party, claims ownership, over nature's resources. The capitalists cannot curb the communists simply by political maneuvering. Nor, can the communists defeat the capitalists, simply by fighting for stolen bread. Claiming ownership, of nature's resources, is an illusory position. Consequently, they will be liable to punishment by the laws of nature. Nuclear capability lies in the hands of both the communists and the capitalists, and if both do not recognize the ownership of the supreme divine, then it is certain that this capability will ultimately ruin both parties. Thus, in order to save themselves and bring peace to the world, both parties must follow Vedic principles. Human beings are not meant to quarrel like cats and dogs. They must be intelligent enough to realize the importance and aim of human life. The Vedic literature is meant for humanity and not for cats and dogs. Sometimes, we even see people accepting wild animals as their spirit animals. Among the many animals and birds, some are vegetarian and others are carnivorous, but none of them transgress the laws of nature, so there is a dharmic or spiritual element in the behavior of wild animals, which people are attracted to, especially when these animals are juxtaposed against a mankind who have transgressed the laws of nature and become lower than cats and dogs and, in doing so, have forsaken their spiritual inheritance. But hey, there's talk of a rematch between Money Mayweather and Conor McGregor. So, let's quickly forget this crap and cue the smack talk. Um, cat, sat. Oh yeah!